My name is Jenny Roberts and I'm the application manager for the Thermo Scientific Triton XT Thermal Ionization Mass Spectrometer. And today I want to give you a short presentation about how we can use uranium lead isotopes and the Triton XT to really push the limits in terms of precision for uranium lead dating. Although I'm giving this presentation, I really want to highlight that this is the work that has been done by some of our colleagues and collaborators at ETH Zurich, including Jan Wodzlow. Most of you know that uranium lead geochronology is a really powerful tool that gives you valuable insights into the rate of change of different geological processes over the course of Earth's evolution. Now, there are three main ways that we can go about uranium lead dating. The first is secondary iron mass spectrometry. Then there's ICPMS, induct laser ablation, inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry. And then the third method is isotope dilution, thermal ionization mass spectrometry, known as ID TIMS. And it's ID TIMS, this third method, that is really the gold standard in terms of uranium lead dating. This gives you the best accuracy and the best precision for your uranium lead dating. And to date, we can get uranium lead dating down to an order of 0.5 per mil precision. And what I want to talk to you today about is how we can use the Triton XT coupled with the 10 to the 13 ohm amplifier technology to push that limit of precision down to the 0.1 per mil um, precision. Before I go into talking about the science, I just want to introduce the technology. So the Triton XT thermal ionization mass spectrometer is a multi-collector magnetic sector mass spectrometer um, where the sample is ionized um, via a thermal source. So just to orient you to the instrument, we have the source housing here where samples are ionized thermally and then they're taken into the magnet here where the ions are separated and then the ions are detected here in the multi-collector um, multi housing. And then those ion counts are converted into a digital signal with our amplifier housing here. Samples are loaded onto filament and put into the source housing where they're heated up slowly and those atoms are converted into iron. Now the beauty of TIMS is that because we're ionizing with a thermal source, those ions have a really narrow range of ionization energies. This means that we get the best precision and the best accuracy when they're eventually detected by our multi-collector housing. For uranium lead analyses, the different volatility of uranium and lead means that as the temperature of the filament is increased, lead will evaporate first, followed by uranium. This allows the isotope ratios of uranium and lead in the same sample to be analysed separately. So the samples are drawn through the magnet, they're separated, and they're collected in the multi-collector housing, which has um, nine Faraday cups, which are movable, and there are also up to eight um, ion counters, including three um, full-scale SEMs. And then in the amplifier housing, we have um, the possibility of having 10 to the 13 ohm resistors, which means that we can measure very small samples um, at high precision. This is what the multi-collector looks like on the inside. You can see the nine different Faraday cups, which are all movable. And then behind the central cup would sit the central SEM. So there are a number of possible method setups for measuring lead isotope ratios. Either dynamic peak copying routine using ax the axial SEM, in which each lead isotope is measured individually by the axial SEM. It is, of course, relatively slow and takes 30 seconds to cycle through all of the masses. The alternative to this is static multi-collector measurements using the 10 to the 13 ohm amplifier technology. This is much more efficient as all the masses are measured at all at the same time. Therefore, static measurements of lead take approximately 45 minutes, whereas dynamic measurements can take anywhere between five to seven hours. What we want to do today is show you the difference between uranium lead dating where the lead isotopic ratio is measured either dynamically with the axial SEM or statically with our 10 to the 13 ohm amplifier technology. What you will see is that not only are the static measurements with the 10 to the 13 ohm amplifier technology more efficient, they are also a factor of three more precise. 
To demonstrate this, we're going to show you uranium lead dates measured on two samples. First, a synthetic solution called Earth Time, and then a natural Archean igneous zircon reference material called OG1. These samples were analysed at ETH on a Triton series TIMS equipped with eight 10 to the 13 ohm amplifiers. So here are the 236-238 dates for the ET100 synthetic solution, in which the samples which were determined um, by dynamic peak hopping are shown in red, and those samples that were determined by the static measurements on the 10 to 13 ohm amplifiers are shown in green. There are several things that are immediately apparent. First, both setups give accurate resu results, but the internal and external precision for the statically measured lead isotopes are a factor of three better than those samples measured by dynamic peak hopping. Why is that? Well, this comes down to counting statistics. Because the SEM has a limited dynamic range, the maximum signal that we can measure with it is 10 times smaller than what we measure with the 10 to 13 ohm amplifiers. This means that in order to reduce the uncertainty, we have to measure for a much longer time. This is further compounded by the fact that we are peak hopping and so have to measure for even longer in order to count the equivalent number of ions on every isotope. Ultimately, this means that the larger dynamic range and the higher duty cycle of the 10 to 13 ohm amplifiers enables 10 times more efficient and more precise measurements. A similar picture is observed in the lead lead ages of the natural archaeon zircons OG1. Again, we find that both setups yield the same range of 237-236 lead dates. But the analytical uncertainty is a factor of three improved for static lead measurements. This allows us to achieve an analytical uncertainty of less than 100,000 years, which for Archean zircons is truly remarkable. In these zircons, the higher internal precision of the static measurements, as shown by the coloured part of the vertical bar, results in the resolvable differences in single crystal 207-206 lead dates that are not resolvable with the SEM method. These differences reflect either a protracted zircon crystallisation history or intercrystal uranium isotope heterogeneity. These results show that the precision of the 207-206 lead dates of the Archean zircons is now primarily limited by the uncertainty of the 238-235 uranium ratio rather than by instrumental limitations. So hopefully we've managed to convince you that using the Triton XT coupled to the 10 to 13 ohm amplifier technology, um, you can really increase the precision of your uranium lead um, dating. By measuring statically rather than dynamically, there are three main advantages. The first is that you can decrease your measurement time by a factor of seven. You can also have a greater dynamic range which makes for more convenient measurements. And thirdly, and most importantly, we increase our precision by a factor of three. Ultimately, this means a higher sample throughput at a higher precision which means more time outside the lab.